There can be only one podcast, and may it be the princes of the universe. Hi, folks. I'm Matt. I am by myself. It is my fault. Uh, last week, uber busy, <laughs> uber busy. Uh, had an author switch an interview date on me. Uh, had a more civilized age to record, which is coming out later on this week. And then, of course, the last of EU March Madness, which took up a lot of my nights, and it is completely my fault. Uh, Wes and uh, Brandon, even, uh, we had some dates planned, and we'll, we'll get to this one. I'll bring them in next week and do one. So I'm sorry, just it, it's the weirdest thing. Every night, every night. I had something going on, uh, interview-wise and everything. So now, now, right before I get the get this podcast ready to go, I'm going to record this real quick here. Um, do have a topic, obviously. The topic is Ghostbusters. I saw the new movie, and I thought I'd just get my thoughts on Ghostbusters as a whole. Uh, a lot of people uh, grew up on Ghostbusters. Uh, we did not. We did not see the movie when it first came out. Of course, it had ghosts in it. My brother, I think I've told the story before, my little brother was scared of everything, so we weren't allowed to watch anything. We weren't even allowed to watch Scooby-Doo. Because, and mom, the only thing we got away with was when the, the episode where Batman and Robin were on Scooby-Doo, we'd watch that because mom thought when she looked in there, she thought she'd see Batman and Robin and thought we were watching Super Friends and didn't realize what Scooby-Doo was. So that was the only Scooby-Doo episode I remember ever watching was the one that crossed over with Batman, um, for crying out loud, of all things. But uh, overall, uh, we, um, it, it's, uh, we didn't watch Ghostbusters for the longest, and then what happened was the the real Ghostbusters cartoon uh, came out, and the cartoon was basically our first experience with Ghostbusters, period. Uh, so we watched the real, and how did we get around watching that? I don't know. I guess my mom was always gone when we were watching it. I can't remember why. Uh, we we were we weren't allowed to watch it. I know that we snuck that in, but I guess it was in the mix of Saturday morning cartoons or whatever when she wasn't watching, and we could always watch that one. We thought it was so cool. We wanted the toys. We wanted to be Ghostbusters. We wanted the backpacks. We wanted the trap things. But of course, we couldn't ask for any of that. My mom. My mom was not going to let us. I remember someone for my birthday or someone's birthday gave us one of the Ghostbuster ghosts. You know, you flip. They were human, but you flip them around. They turned this ugly ghost. Mom took the toy back and returned it after the party birthday party was over. We were not allowed to have that ugly toy. Anything with ghosts and demons was bad back then. So, but we definitely wanted to be Ghostbusters growing up and have the toys and everything with it. Uh, unfortunately, that was not the case. But we watched the cartoon and we loved the cartoon. And for a while, my girls uh, watched the cartoon two Halloweens ago. Uh, not this past Halloween, but two Halloweens ago, my wife would turn on real Ghostbusters. And they'd watch it. They'd watch an episode every October and into November. And uh, I, we, we tried playing it a little bit this past October, but then they wanted to watch something else. So I guess that time came and went for us. Very brief for them. When they were three or four years old, they, that was the only time they enjoyed it. But it was a good cartoon. We enjoyed it. And then years later, in Mississippi, still growing up in Mississippi, years after the movie, a few years after the movie had come out, someone had, everyone had it on VHS. A lot of people had it on VHS. And, of course, we go over to someone's house. They have it. They, hey, we're going to watch it. We're like, oh, my gosh. You know, we're all quiet because we're hoping our parents don't figure out that we're over here watching this movie. They think we're out playing. <laughs> ah, the 80s. <laughs> your, your parents didn't know where you were. As long as you came home for dinner, they didn't care where you were. So could have been smoking crack. But, uh, no, we, we, we were there watching Ghostbusters. Probably even worse. But uh, I remember it being super scary as a kid at times. I was really scared, especially with the uh, ghosts in the fridge or whatnot. I, that, that really scared me. And uh, But overall, we thought it was a really cool movie and really awesome special effects, I remember. Like, oh, my gosh, how they get these real ghosts on there and stuff like that. And uh, loved it. And we knew there was a, a, a sequel would come out, but we didn't see that one. That one wasn't out on VHS back then. And when we moved to Louisiana, uh, it was probably one of those times we either spent the night or spent the day at someone's house. And his mom had different, everyone's mom had different rules, right, on what you could and couldn't watch. Some moms didn't care as much or parents didn't care as much. This lady, uh, in our house, it was only G-rated movies. That was all we were, PG, out of the question. Out of the question, PG. But in a lot of other households, you could watch a PG movie. And so we went to a household that watched PG movies. And I believe, 
Ghostbusters 2 was PG or maybe PG-13, I can't remember. But it was allowable. There was a, there, I don't know if your parents had this or some your friends had this, but you had a VHS, you had VHSs for you and VHSs for the adults. <laughs> and they weren't nasty ones. It was like die hard. You know, the, the ones with the F word were the bad ones, you know, behind the, the beaded curtain at the house. There was no beaded curtain at our house, but um, behind the, uh, you know, there are certain things on your shelf that the kid's shelf you could do. And, and on the kid, the children's shelf or the kid, stuff that kids could watch in this household was Ghostbusters 1 and 2. Now, we'd already seen the first one, and we really wanted to see the second one as kids. Remember, we begged our friend, oh, can we please watch this? We've never seen it. He's like, oh, you never seen it? Okay. He said, do you want to watch the first one? I was like, no, we want to watch the second one. So we watched the second one, and we, we I remember enjoying it, thinking, okay, that was okay. I felt bad for the Ghostbusters because they were out of a job at the beginning, and they were doing, like, kids' birthday parties. And the, the picture thing, I was like, eh, okay. You know, I did. I just thought it was like a regular adventure. I was like, eh, okay. You know, it was all right. It was all right. And that's, that's, that's all I thought. Now, of course, years later, I'd go back and watch these. Um, and, you know, as I'm older, my opinion of the first one, brilliant movie. Flawless movie. I mean, A+. Plus, there's, there's no, if, they, if that was the only movie they ever made, this is a movie that did not require sequels. It did never needed a sequel. It was perfect on its own. You had just enough of everyone. Yes, you love those characters. But do you have to see them again? Not really. Not really after the first movie. The first movie is really all you need. And no matter what they come out with, no matter what they come out with, I do not think they will ever beat the original. Now, have I been wrong on that before? Yeah, I've been wrong twice on that before. I believe Top Gun 2 is a better movie than Top Gun. I just I just believe it is. Um, I believe the Cobra Kai series has, you know, in a way, in a way, overall, this has its ups and downs, but in a way, it has uh, really succeeded the films, the Karate Kid films, in a way, uh, for me. It's not perfect. Cobra Kai isn't perfect, as we've We've heard on, uh, well, it was probably Saturday morning, Sam Flanch to talk about Cobra Kai, but the uh, every season, you know, there's certain scenes or kids we just don't like. And if it was, but of course, they're, they're kind of stuck with those kids now because they had to cast pretty cheap and they couldn't get top talent back then. But overall, I think it's basically seceded, uh, exceeded, I guess is the word, uh, the original movies. People probably disagree with me on that, but those are the two movies, those are two things in today's world that has lifted the legacy up higher. I think Rocky Balboa is better than Rocky. I, I That's kind of wild, too, I know. And I love the Rocky movies. I'm, I'm a, I, Rocky is such a great movie, the, the original. And did we need to see more of them? Yes, we did. <laughs> yes to all of them. But Rocky Balboa is still probably my favorite. There's so many good scenes, so many good stuff. Even... even you just have to cut out all the scenes with Creed in it, but Creed 1 and 2, I never saw Creed 3 because Rocky wasn't in it. I didn't care anymore. But Creed 1 and 2, the best scenes in there are is Rocky. It's the best stuff in there. It's the best stuff, you know. And uh, and I'd, I'd even watch Creed 1 and 2 again if I was doing a Rocky marathon just to get those Rocky moments. So I think that character got better with age, obviously. Now, of course, Creed 1 and 2 aren't better than Rocky Balboa because they weren't focused on Rocky. But if, let's say, Creed 1 had been focused, like Rocky had been the star and Creed had been the co-star, it may have beat Rocky Balboa because it just seems like the more Sylvester Stallone took on that role, the better he became. Now, in this one, do the originals, the more they take on the role, get better? Well, I'll get to that in a minute. No, I don't think. Because the sequel didn't do much for the whole thing. I remember watching the second one again. It's fine as a whole. And what I would say is an A for effort. That's what I would say. First one's a classic. Classic. You know, but the second one, A for effort. They didn't do a repeat, a rinse and repeat. Yes, they're busting ghosts. They got that one thing. But they used different, what, ooze tanks, pink slime tanks. They did, they did different things. You know, kind of mi mixed things up a little bit. Which was neat, you know. Made a different villain, had a different uh, story plot line. I I don't mind it at all. I think it was fine. The uh, and the opening was fun too. So there's a lot of little things from two that are charming. Uh, is it the best one out there? No, it's not the best, and it's far uh, inferior to the original. But guess what, folks? It's the second best Ghostbusters film. <laughs> now people can can probably disagree with me on that because I know there's a lot of people who loved Afterlife and maybe even Frozen Empire, which I'm going to talk about later. But for me, 
uh, when you have the originals in it, there's nothing like the originals. They still had their chemistry. The guys still had their chemistry. Of course, it's the last time we'd see Egon on the screen, but uh, they still had their chemistry there. And so for that reason, two, solid film, not the best, but again, A for effort for going outside the box, flexing outside the box. Now, after that, I want to talk about the dark period. For years, for years, we heard that there's going to be a Ghostbusters 3 with the ghost doing the three. And it was in what they say production hell all through the 90s. All through the 90s, Dan Aykroyd would say, yeah, we're making it. Like after, what, Blues Brothers 2000 even, I think he was, even into the early 2000s, he kept saying, yeah, we're, we're, we're dusting off the script, we got this going on. And you hear, I've read all the stories about it, like, you know, they had ideas, they wanted to get Bill Murray involved, but Bill Murray blew up in the 90s. And so he really wasn't interested in revisiting a franchise or a character from before. And I get that because he wants to do new things. He wants to take on different roles and stuff. He doesn't need... Go Ghostbusters needed Bill Murray more than Bill Murray needed Ghostbusters, okay? Times have changed since then, but, but back then, that's the way it was. And so he was... And my feelings was, oh, come on, Bill, don't be such a snob. But I, I understand it. I understand it now. And... Uh, I remember there was one, if you've read any of this stuff, you probably know, but Dan Aykroyd had an idea. Okay, well, let's, because it was Dan Aykroyd's baby for the longest, let's kill off Bill Murray, make him a ghost, you know, kind of the storyline that they brought for Egon in Afterlife. In fact, I think, now that I'm thinking about it, and I don't know anything about how the new movies were constructed, but it seems like they took some of the script ideas from Dan Aykroyd and just kind of massaged them for the new generation. But even that's kind of wonky. You always heard about Chris Farley joining the cast, you know, in the early 90s. Chris Farley's going to be a Ghostbuster too, and all this other stuff. And that would have been great. It would have been great to have a 90s Ghostbusters. In fact, just, I mean, I know they felt like they had to have the originals. And, yeah, Bill Murray is a part of the heart of that movie, all right? He, he and uh, Dan Aykroyd. But you can move on. Three would be a, a big step down, maybe, without Bill Murray. Maybe a cameo, or if you could get him for that. But even if he didn't want to show up. Having the originals, or three out of the four come back with a new cast, would have been fun. It probably would have been good. Um, I've heard about, and like I said, on and off until the mid, mid to late 2000s, you heard that they were bringing it back, and it just seemed like it was dead in the water. Um, West End Games actually did some RPG books, and uh, I, they are super expensive to track down, uber expensive uh, to get. So they're not worth a buying, but <clears throat> someone may have downloaded them. Sometimes you can find them free online, the RPGs. And I uh, printed out every one. I have them right here in this drawer behind me. Uh, the uh, drawer that she said, a lot of times when I'm doing the uh, my streams and everything, behind me you'll see like a little shelf with some drawers. In one of those drawers is my Ghostbusters RPG material. I have it all, even the uh, little expansion they came out with and the side, side adventure too they came out with. Uh, do I do RPGs? No, I do not. But when I do... I definitely want to do the, all the Star Wars RPGs. I think that'd be great. I mean, I have all the West End game stuff, all the uh, Wizard of the Coast. I just realized now Benjamin, who is a dungeon master, is gone. Uh, he's uh, he's probably never coming back, moving to Australia for good. But the idea was when the kids got a little bit older in the next couple of years, we'd start doing an RPG group, you know, with Star Wars. And I was going to actually invite, you know, maybe four others or do something online. I still may do this. Because I know a lot of Ghostbuster uh, fans. Some of my good friends are Ghostbusters uh, from across the pond. Luke from down from the attic. And, of course, my friend Matthew, the Geeks Attic on YouTube, is a big Ghostbusters fan. And I thought the uh, four of us, another friend of mine, uh, Bernardo from Tabletop Island, could all do an online one. And there's no way we could. I mean, there's still a way we can still do that. And I'd still be totally interested in doing our uh, Ghostbusters RPG because I mean heck I, I paid for all the I prayed to have it printed out which wasn't cheap because um, it was in color but I wanted it just just the way it was because I it's still cheaper than buying the stupid book I'll tell you that but uh anyway I, I I'm I'm a big fan I read through the RPG I like it I think the second adventure is kind of hokey but it doesn't matter you know it's like it's like 50s Cadillac space driving you know, uh, Ghostbusters, you know, with the, not, you know, I mean, Ghost with like Elvis and d dudes is really weird. You know, it's like 50s in space, Ghostbusters. And, uh, go, you know, I, I, I guess they're aliens. How can they be ghosts? 
But either way, they're from another planet or whatnot. It gets really crazy, but it doesn't matter because it's fun. And I, I, they probably come out with some more Ghostbusters RPG. It's probably really popular. I wouldn't know. All I know is that West End Games had it, and I like West End Games, so I, I got all that. I, am I a huge Ghostbuster fan? No. No, I'm not. I enjoy the series. I think it's cool. I know people are big Ghostbuster fans, and that's cool, cool, good for them. Uh, but for me, not really that big into it, but big enough to be interested in playing an RPG, if I can say that. Now, I don't know if any other books or comic books came out. I probably should have studied on that. I don't believe any books came out. Would I read a novel? Sure. Would I read a comic book? Probably not. Because a lot of times, comic books from IPs suck, and they are awful. Case in point, Firefly. I think the novels, over uh, they've been okay lately, but the first ones by James Hargrove are perfect. They're unbelievably good. The comic books? Not good. Not good. I mean, maybe if I found the trade paperbacks were cheap, I'd buy it and read through them. But I stopped getting them midway through a story, too, because it was just awful. They were just no good. I did not enjoy a single one of the comic books at all. It was like, this is just not worth reading. It's just not worth reading. But the comic books I thought were crap, but the books I thought were pretty good. And I still buy the books when they come out, even though they're okay now. But with a comp book, I usually tend to ignore those because I don't think you know comp books do a lot of these IPs justice. But a book, if they had a novel, which I don't think they do, I would definitely read it. Um, but anyway, so that's all we kind of had. Ghostbusters fans had. Now, of course, I wasn't a big Ghostbusters fan, but I'm just saying Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters fans in general had. Now, at all the comic cons, whenever I see Ecto-1s or people dress up as Ghostbusters... And they have these really nice packs. I know Luke from Down from the Haddock has this amazing pack that makes all the noise and everything. That's incredible. And I, I, I the creativity just astounds me. And yes, oh yes, I would love a Ghostbusters outfit. Yes, I would. That'd be awesome. Um, I, I'm not that talented to build one, though. But uh, I never played games. I never played the board game. I did look at a board. There's a board game that came out. I guess it was successful. I had two. You can get these for pretty cheap, even the deluxe editions. <laughs> and it looks like a miniatures game. And I'm not really big into the miniatures game. And I looked to see how it was played. And meh, it's interesting okay. It's interesting okay. But overall, I didn't feel like it was anything I had to buy. Now, if I ever want to get it, it's super cheap. I mean, it's super affordable to get a Ghostbusters board game or Ghostbusters 2 board game. Uh, but for me, it just it seemed too finicky. It just seemed, you know, not... I mean, maybe for the big fan, they love it. But for me, it just didn't feel like it was for me. So all this extra merchandise around, you know, I'm, I haven't been really attracted to most of it is what I'm trying to say. Uh, of course, in 2016, you had the horrendous movie come out. I never saw it because the moment when I heard it was going to be a pure reboot with those four girls, I was like, I'm out. See ya, deuces. And from what I've heard from friends and from fans, it sucked. It was the worst thing ever. I mean, we're talking bag over their head, embarrassing to talk about. Ghostbusters fans ignore it. Like, I, I know that some people got up mad because Ghostbusters 1 and 2 were sold in a pack with Afterlife on DVD. But where was Ghostbusters 2016? Well, it was garbage, and they knew people wouldn't, re or wouldn't watch it. It's a gar and I know people are calling for let's forgive this movie, folks. It wasn't that bad. Let's let's include them too. No! Screw them. They tried to do a reboot. It sucked. They missed the entire point, the heart of uh, Ghostbusters. And you know, of course, there's a big discussion. Well, they don't like women. Oh, please, that's such an old tired argument. Uh, the movie just sucked. It just sucked. Okay. No one was interested. I have zero interest to ever, ever watch it. And so and I know the originals came back as cameos, but just as cameos. I don't think they were their actual characters from the original movie. But either way, uh, according to all my friends, they thought Ghostbusters, as a franchise, was dead. They thought it was dead. And then, of course, along comes Afterlife. Now, Afterlife got a big delay because of COVID. They got filmed, I believe, in 2019. Going to be released in 2020. Got this big delay. And, uh, you know, and I'd, I'd totally forgotten about it. And then when it came out, I believe it was 2022, um, I was like, oh, okay. And so we watched it. Watched it the same time. The uh, That was the same year the third Spider-Man Tom Holland movie came out. And it was good. Afterlife was fun. And I, I believe I gave a review on it on Prince of the Universe years ago. And I said, uh, this is one of the movies where usually young kids just annoy me. Like the super smart Spangler kid, the granddaughter. Ugh. I've seen that, but podcast, the guy who records everything, everywhere he goes, the social media guru. Oh, get out of here. You know, so all these generic trope characters that I didn't care about at all, 
uh, usually wouldn't care about. I did. They did not annoy me. I actually enjoyed them. I enjoyed their story. And I remember walking out of the theater going, wow, that was not so bad. All the kids didn't annoy, uh, annoy me. And, of course, the Ghostbusters reunite for one scene at the end, you know, which was nice, which was fun. Uh, but uh, and it, it had a nice overall story. My wife walked out of the theater. That was the best movie she'd seen in theaters that year. She even told me that. Like, she liked it better than the third Spider-Man movie, which I totally disagree with. I thought the third Spider-Man movie, they name, the Spider-Man movies are named Home Something. Uh, that's so stupid, but Homecoming, Back to Home, Home Plate, whatever it's called, Home Run. Uh, the third Spider-Man movie with Tom Holland was good. It was great. It was the best thing Marvel has put out ever, I think. And, but my wife went, I like Ghostbusters Afterlife better. I was like shocked. Like in my top five that year, I'm pretty sure Ghostbusters was like number four or five. It did make my top five. I did enjoy it. But it was a low top five for me. It wasn't a high top five. But my wife told me that was her number one movie she had seen in theaters all year. So really shocking for me. And uh, like I said, overall, fun, entertaining, worth my time. And I dub it the you know, respectable third best movie you know i i still think it's inferior to two because you can't beat the originals you just can't beat the originals now you may disagree with me with that and that's fine let me know in the comments below but that's how i felt about afterlife now when we switch over and i'm going to do spoilers by the way for frozen empire because i did just see it this week but uh when we get to see frozen empire everyone gave me the same review they said it is okay it's not bad it's not great it's just okay now, that's not something you want to hear about a movie, right? <laughs> and after Dune 2, everyone's shot. And I did not go see Dune. I haven't I seen Dune. My wife is not interested in seeing Dune. She saw the first one, yes, but she has zero interest to see the second one. So I'm just going to have to wait till that comes out on streaming. And I don't mind. I don't mind waiting. You're like, oh, Matt, you're the biggest Dune fan. I am a big Dune fan. I am a huge Dune fan. I look forward to watching this movie, part two. But I'm not going to go to the theaters by myself. I'm just not. My wife's not interested to go, so I'm not going. I'm just not going. I'll wait. I can wait. I've got other things to do with my time. Remember, movies aren't my life. Movies and TV shows are not my life. Board games and, and books. You know, those are the two things that I love most, you know, as hobby wise goes. So I love reading books. I love playing board games. I'd rather do both of those than watch a movie. Even a movie I'm, I'd be excited to see. I'd rather play, a, like, if I could have watched a board game that night instead of go to Ghostbusters, I would have played a board game. <laughs> You know, even the movie, every time I wanted to go to a movie, if I could play a board game instead or read a book, done, done, done. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'd watch a movie over, read, take a break over reading a book. But either way, you get my point. So the next one comes out. I'm excited to see it. I'm like, yeah, let's do this. Uh, I showed the trailer to the missus. The missus is oh, ho hum about it. But, you know, she's like, yeah, let's, let's go see it because she enjoyed the first one. So we went to watch this one and. Just like every other reviewer said, it was meh. It was meh. You know, it wasn't bad. It wasn't the best movie. In fact, it's the fourth best movie. Now, unlike the other ones, like it's going to take some effort, in my opinion. It's going to take a little bit of effort to beat the third, the Afterlife movie. It'll take hardly any effort to beat this movie. And, you know, just to be slightly a little bit better. I mean, it, it wasn't bad. It was okay. It was okay. My wife said that she felt, and she's kind of right here, that uh, a lot of the... Best scenes were in the trailer. And I hate when a movie does that, but I got to admit to her that, that, that she's right on that. A lot of the best scenes were in the trailer. And I don't think they had that much to go on. And what is the problem with this? You're trying to put your finger on it. First off, Lucky, I, I guess she was in Afterlife. That is the only kid I have zero memory about. Zero me Like, uh, everyone knows her. She's in this movie. I thought she was a new character, but it seems like she was in the first movie. I have zero memory if she was in the th last movie I, I i and i like that movie but i have i do not remember lucky at all at all being in this um they introduced a lot of new characters and i felt like we just never got time to take the time to get to know the characters the overall story is fine it's five about some kind of frost demon that they captured years ago. And, and again, they make changes to how the Ghostbusters bust this ghost. They can't bust this ghost the regular way because only a fire master can take him on. And are you the fire master is what he said. Kind of like the key master and stuff. He goes, he, he kills someone who just on the sign outside says fire master. It's a smoke uh, pa uh, cigarette place, I guess. 
And he goes, yeah, I'm the smart fire master. And he killed the frost demon kills him. I say frost demon. He's called something else, but it's a frost demon. And it's fine. Story plot line. We see someone from the original one who was the mayor's aide is now the mayor. That was fun. Uh, the kids are back. Podcast isn't doing podcast anymore. I mean, he's kind of helping Ray with his social media accounts, but he's not doing podcast. And so podcast has lost his little niche. And what he's doing there, I guess, he's he lied to his parents. He told them he was at summer camp, space camp, but he's really in New York busting ghosts. Okay, for how long? I mean, that's your idea. I, and it just, it just seems like he was there. It felt like we were walking in the middle of a storyline. Um, the Spangler Girl is about the granddaughter. I felt it was about her the first movie, so she gets to take, you know, her story takes lead in this movie. Uh, she befriends a ghost. Uh, some people say that she fell in love with the ghost. I don't know. They kind of walked a line there, but I think the sound, they could say they were just good friends. She just was lonely and needed a friend. Yeah, she could have been in love with the ghost. I don't know. I don't. They didn't. I don't know. But either way, um, I think they walked the line with that storyline, which is a smart decision because then you'd had people hating the movie if she had fallen in love with the ghost. But uh, but but they should have put. Now that I'm thinking about it, they should have put a, a, a little. Uh, what's it called? A uh, Easter egg for the movie Ghost. <laughs> That'd have been funny. Or he falls in love with uh, what was it? Demi Moore. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen that movie. Now that I think about it, I don't think I ever saw Ghost. Um, I know about it because I, I, it was such a popular movie, but I don't think I've ever seen it. Either way, either way, off track there. Um, but the all and the only you know you have to unhook your brain like you do in every movie. I try not to overanalyze every movie, but the one point of the movie that I just thought was total bogus. She tells Ray, the little girl, Spangler girl, tells Ray that this demon was captured by brass and copper, but they don't have any copper. They stripped the wall of copper, you know, the, the everything was stripped of copper in the building, but they do have that brass pole. So she cuts the brass pole, melts the brass, dips her little backpack, one of her little parts pieces to her backpack in brass, and thereby empower, empowering the stream to affect the demon. But she didn't do that to everyone's backpack, just hers. And she had a big old pot of melted brass. Like she could have dipped everyone's in there. And she told Ray, it wasn't something she did on her own. So why didn't everyone dip their backpack in brass? Like it would have been nice if they would have just said, hey, you're too young. Like the theme was she was too young to bust ghosts. So the, so the mayor deemed. And so she gets cut out of the Ghostbusters. So maybe they, they say, hey, you're cut out. And so she gets the idea on her own and melts the brass. But no, she told Ray, and I'm assuming everyone else there, that brass hurts the demon. Let's dip our backpacks in brass. But she was the only one that did it. And that makes no sense to me. It makes no sense to me. Um, the originals are in it a little bit, but they don't get as much screen time as I would have liked. Yes, we got to make way for the new. I get that. But I'd like to see more of a partnership between old and new and have them have bigger roles. There's nothing, and my wife even said, Ernie Hudson, Dan Aykroyd did a great job. And if Bill Murray was in it more, Bill Murray, is, Bill, Bill Murray just is awesome in any scene. So it's not like these people can't hold their own or that their acting's weak. Their acting is really spot on. Give them a more side-by-side -side role like you see in Cobra Kai. Have that perfect mix of old and new. And I think you'd have a more solid film that could even beat out Afterlife. I still don't think they could. I mean, maybe, maybe they could beat out Ghostbusters 2. They'll never beat the original. But uh, maybe if they gave them equal share screen time, they could do something. Now, I don't, I, 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 at the moment, I think the movie's doing okay. Will it get another movie sequel? Maybe. Does it need it? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I definitely would like to see a stronger direction, though. And maybe more of the original, a more team up, uh, worthy team up, where the originals have as much screen time as the uh, new ones do. Paul Rudd is perfect for it. I love Paul Rudd in it. I, I thought the Marshmallow Man, the cute little ghost thing, was kind of a tired trope and not funny. I did not laugh at all. Anything they did, um, I think you were supposed to get yucks, a lot more yucks than you, uh, you know, laughs and kicks and giggles than, than they than I got out of it. I think they expected the audience to love it a little bit more. But with the cute, cuddly aliens that burp, you know, vomit, slime everywhere, the bringing Slimer back and everything. Um, they have that Slimer popcorn bucket at Cinemark that costs 20 bucks and looks like it only gives you like five kernels of popcorn in it. No thank you. Ever. I wouldn't, I mean, it's a collector's item. Yeah, you're just <laughs> juicing those uh, 
uh, squeeze in those Ghostbusters fans for every dime and nickel they've earned, right? But overall, Frozen Empire was meh. So far this year, I mean, I have only, I've only seen two movies, and I was telling my wife that the top, my top five is going to be very easy to take the top five spots now because right now all I've seen are low top fivers or honorable mentions. But anyway, let me know in the comments, what did you think of Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, and you know, do you love Ghostbusters in general? You know, what do you what do you think about all these movies? Did you ever watch 2016? I hope not. In fact, don't tell me that. You'll embarrass yourself. But anyway, all right. So next week, more friends. I promise. We'll see you then on Princes of the Universe.